Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Martin. Let's talk about books. Our book talk slides are going to have the cover of the book as well as the title and author listed at the top. The genre is going to be in the top right hand corner of each slide. Please be sure to jot down any books and uh, genres and authors that sound good to you so that when you come down to the library or go on to uh, Mac and Via or onto Destiny Discover, you're able to search up those book titles and have those uh, ready to go. The first title I'm sharing with you today is Famous Last Words by Katie Allender, and it comes from our mystery section. What if you all of a sudden started seeing things that weren't there, or at least that's what you assumed what was happening? Willa is seeing frantic messages written all over her walls and a reflection that isn't her own when she looks in a mirror. It's almost as if someone or something is trying to send her some kind of message. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, where she's living, a killer is stalking people, and it's a killer who is reenacting famous murder scenes from movies. Is it possible that Willa's strange visions have something to do with this killer and these unsolved murders? Or is she completely losing it? The scene I'm going to read comes from the beginning of the book where Willa is in her swimming pool. I bobbed up at the deep end, taking a deep breath. I prepared to plunge under again and swim back to the shallow end. I could almost imagine that I was Diana Del Mar, a movie star, and this house was all mine. No stepfathers or headaches or new school to worry about. Just me, beautiful and adored, gliding like a water nymph through my fabulous swimming pool. Then something brushed my ankle. I yelped in surprise and spun around, treading water as I searched for whatever had touched me. Nothing. There was nothing. It must have been bubbles, a random current, maybe a sunken palm frond. But then I felt it again. This time it took hold and pulled me under. Fear and adrenaline burst through me in a massive, soul-shaking pulse. My heart slammed around in my chest like it was trying to break out of my rib cage. Then something grabbed my other foot. For a moment, I didn't even process it as something that was really happening. Because it couldn't be happening. It wasn't happening. Only it was. I tried to kick free, but my legs were held fast. I managed to flail above the surface of the water and gasp in an enormous breath before being yanked back down toward the blue tiled bottom of the pool. My brain was on red alert, acting on pure animal instinct. This is not okay. I thrashed and groped at my ankles in an attempt to pry off whatever had wrapped around them, but I couldn't free myself. In fact, as far as I could see, there was nothing to free myself from. Not another person, not a rope or piece of plastic, not even a nightmarish monster, only the sharp outline of my own body as I flipped and struggled. I was rapidly running out of air. Panicked, I looked up toward the sky and saw another person in the water. For the briefest second, I thought it was someone else swimming, and I wondered wildly why they wouldn't help me. But then it hit me with ironclad certainty. This person wasn't swimming. They were floating, and it wasn't a person. It was a corpse. It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Segura comes from our realistic fiction section. And in this book, 16-year-old Sana has a lot of secrets. Some are small, like how it bothers her when her friends don't invite her to every party. Some are big like the fact that she's pretty sure her dad is having an affair. But there's also the one that she can barely even admit to herself, and it's the one about how she might have a crush on her best friend. She's not really sure what to do with that. And then she up and moves with her family to California, and it seems like maybe that problem for now, or that secret, I should say, is going to stay hidden until she meets Jamie. Sana always figured that the hardest thing would be to tell people that she wants to date a girl. But as she quickly learns, it's telling the truth that's easy. It's what comes after that truth that is a lot more complicated. I absolutely loved this book. 
It's not like it's a secret. Check this one out in realistic fiction under S for Segura. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs in Fantasy is perfect for that spooky read you might be seeking. This has everything, a mysterious island, an abandoned orphanage, and a strange collection of very curious photographs. We're gonna watch this trailer to learn more. Dad, you ready for bed now? No, tell me a story. You want to hear about the children, hmm? Okay. Once upon a time, on an island, on the other side of the world, there live some very peculiar children. They all live together in a big old house. It was an enchanted place where no one could find them. And the sun shone every day. They were so happy. They could do amazing things. Like what? Well, let's see. Uh, there was a little boy who you couldn't see at all unless he was wearing clothes. And another one who could hold fire in her bare hands as if it was nothing. There was a pair of sisters who could talk to each other without ever saying a word. And a girl who could walk without her feet even touching ground. She was so light, they had to tie a string around her middle to keep her from floating away. And they were all watched over by a wise old bird. Did they have to stay there? Yes, they did. Because they were hiding. Hiding from what? book has so much suspense to it, and I hope that you'll check that one out. It is the first in the series. The Running Dream by Wendelin Van Dranen in Sports is a great read, especially for anyone who has a passion for something. If there is something that you absolutely love to do, I'd recommend thinking about that before picking up this book. For you, it might be music or art or um, gaming or a sport, whatever that might be, that is true for our main character, Jessica. She obviously, from the cover of this book, as you can tell, loves to run and is quite good at running. She thinks, though, her life is over when she loses her leg in a car accident. It doesn't comfort her very much um, that you know she'll be able to walk with the help of a prosthetic leg because running has been such a huge part of her life. And without that, she just can't see how she's going to move on. So she's struggling. Her mental health is falling apart. Her emotions are all over the place. And of course, there's the physical struggle of adapting to this, this new leg. Um, she feels like she's in the spotlight with people looking at her all the time. And she also feels invisible because people don't know what to say and therefore they ignore her. She's also embarrassed by the fact that she realizes she's done the same thing to a girl named Rosa at her school who has cerebral palsy. She has, you know, treated her in much the same way, and here Rosa is helping tutor Jessica uh, through the math class that Jessica has missed so much of. And the two become really close, um, you know, have this, this fabulous friendship with one another. Jessica comes to figure out really how much you have to get to know someone before realizing um, you know, there's so much to know about them and understand about them. And Jessica, through the support of family and friends, learns that she is likely able to run again. But it isn't quite that simple. Anymore, that isn't going to be enough. This is such an inspirational read, uh, one that's going to leave you thinking long after you've closed the book. It's called The Running Dream. This is by the same author of Flipped, if you liked that book, 
von Dronnen. You'd look under V in sports. My last book today to share comes from science fiction by Alexander Gordon Smith. This is Lockdown. And I would warn you that this book is one where if you have a weak stomach, I wouldn't pick it up. Furness Penitentiary is, in this story, the world's most secure prison for young offenders. It is a place buried a mile beneath the Earth's surface. And our main character, Alex, um, ends up there really kind of by accident. Um, he is part of a crime at the beginning of the book. And um, I won't tell you details other than he, he, really, he really shouldn't be there. Um, and so he's, he's there, unfortunately. Alex gets sentenced to life. When you go to Furnace, you do not leave. Um, it, is a, it is a place where it's a, it's a lifelong prison. Alex knows he has really two choices. He's either going to die there or he needs to find a way out. And he is determined to get out of there, especially because this place is worse than even um, he had heard rumors of. In this prison, it's a place of, of just pure evil. There are these inhuman creatures wearing gas masks like you see on the cover of the book. They stalk the corridors uh, at night where the tunnels run with blood. There are giants in black suits that are dragging screaming inmates into the shadows, and those inmates never come back. Um, Alex learns that even the warden, the man in charge of this prison, is more evil than anyone could have imagined. So Alex decides with a bunch of the inmates, uh, some who are innocent and some who are cold-blooded killers, that they have got to get themselves out of there, and they start to make a plan to escape. Uh, again, this book is one... Um, if, if, you, uh, if you like gore, if you like disgusting, you know, stuff, I'd, I'd recommend picking it up. It's a fabulous read, but certainly it is not for the weak stomached because there is some really disgusting, um, gory scenes in this, in this book. This is the first in the series, Lockdown um, by Smith in science fiction. Hopefully one of these sounded like a book you would love to check out when you would come to the library um, or put it on hold if uh, all our copies are checked out. Thank you so much for your attention. Happy reading.